Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today I'm going to cover Microsoft Excel's forecast function. If I had to classify this as whether it's a basic, intermediate, or an advanced function, I would say advanced. Um, it predicts future values based on historical or past values. So I'm going to explain how it works first, and then I'm going to run you through three examples, uh, including calculating the population, what it'll be in 2050, the world population. I'm going to show you how it works on depreciation for a car and for a company forecasting out their revenue numbers. I'll also put at the end here, which I have here, is Microsoft's support website for the forecast function. So I have Excel running. Let's go ahead and jump in here. So here's the explain it part. So I have, I made this really simple. I've got X values in column D and I've got Y values. I went one through six, and then I kept going five, 10, 15, 20. So if I want to know what is the value of the number seven, which I'm going to type here in cell D10, I'm going to use the forecast function. I'm going to go the long way using the mouse and show you exactly where this is located. Formulas, function library, more functions, stats, all the way down to the letter F. When Excel 2016 came out, we have a lot of new forecast functions. If you notice in there, the one I'm going to use today for every example is forecast.linear. Here are my arguments, three arguments, all are required. What am I looking for? What data point do you want to predict in the future? I want to know what seven is going to be. What are your known Y's? That is this range right here. E3 to E8. My known X's are the one through six. I already have the number 35. I knew I would get that because I'm explaining this and I set this up intentionally. So I'm going to hit OK. So if I type in the number 20, I should get 100 in cell E10, and I do. If I go put the number 4, which I've done before already, is 20, and I do. So I set that up just to show you how it works, and it is clearly working. So now, so here are my three example, here are my three real life examples. I'm going to take a company. They've got historical data. I want to forecast out four years in the future. Then next, I'm going to take a car because I'm going the other way with it. I'm going to take a car because the car depreciates every year. So I'm going to depreciate it out several years. And then finally, I'm going to take the world population. These numbers are uh, accurate, by the way. And I'm going to predict out for the years uh, 2021 through 2050. So here we go. I'm over in column G and H. I want to forecast. I could do it right here, but I may want to end up putting the actual numbers here, so I'm just going to do it here. So I'm over in cell I9. I'm going to go hit FX since I just used it. Most recently used. There it is. Click OK. So I'm looking for the year 2021. My known Ys are those values in H3 to H8. I'm going to end up auto-filling this down after I get this answer. So I need to absolute reference that with the F4 function key. Same thing with the X's. I'm going to absolute reference them with the F4 function key. Click OK. So forecasting out with the forecast function for the year 2021, 422,533. I did this intentionally with these numbers. If you notice, I started with 250 and I had a decrease the next year. I went down to 240. Also had a decrease in the year 2018. So let's pull this out. So there you go. That is the forecast function. Great function, especially if you're trying to budget for the future or forecast out for the future. It's a good place to always start. So now let's look at car depreciation. I bought the car in 2020. I'm making this up. It was a $30,000 car. 
2021, it went down $5,000 because cars depreciate the minute you drive them off the lot. But then it started going down less amount. So here we go. I'm going to go out just a few years. The 2028. I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to type it this time. Equals forecast. Here's the old forecast function. Notice there's no dot after it. So if you have an older version of Excel, you will have this. If you have Office 365 or Office 2019, this is backwards compatible and I could use it, but I'm just going to stick with the one I have, the new one. So forecast linear. Um, it's asking me for the X. We know that that happens to be 2025, comma, my Y's, I'm going to absolute reference them, comma. My X's, I'm going to absolute reference those. So this car should be below 16,000 in 2025, and it is. Crosshairs, pull down. There's the value of the car because your car is depreciating from the year 2025 through the year 2028 using the forecast function. Last one is the population for the world. The current population right now, and it is uh, February 2020, 7.6 billion, 7.7 .7 billion. It all depends on which one of the websites you use. So here we go. So 2020, 2025, crosshairs. Let's go out to 2050, I said. Those numbers are accurate up above. You know I'm going to use the forecast function. You know that the Y is going to be the population. You know that the X is going to be the years. And you know what else now that I'm going to make this absolute reference because I'm going to autofill it down. So I don't know the year, comma. Whoops, one more time. I like that. Absolute reference, comma. Absolute reference. Hey. I just said it was around 7.6, 7.7. That's all right. 2050, that's actually correct too. I read the other day that they're expecting 10 billion people by the year 2050. So there is your forecast function again. I appreciate your time. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate all the support. Uh, keep asking me questions in the comment section. If I can answer them, I will. Have a great day. Thank you.